Good evening. We'd like to welcome everybody to the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees, Tuesday, July 19th. I'd like to ask for a call to order. Mike Kaley. Present. Julie Spencer Robinson. Present. Richard Aquadro. Present. Mayor Jean Louise Sierra should be here. Mm -hmm. um, and we do not have an NPS interim at the table today. I'd like at this time everybody stand for a pledge of allegiance. Julie. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and one liberty for all justice. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to read our mission statement, Smith Vocational Agricultural High School, is to prepare students for social responsibility, employment, and post-secondary education through rigorous applied technical and academic programs. Is there any participation by the public tonight? Please come forward. I'd like to have Kim Keogh address the trustees. Thank you. Um, yes, and Tracy Burke, my colleague, sends her apologies. The poor dear had to go on vacation in Greece, so she's not here. But um, on behalf of her and myself, um, we want to say thank you to the Board of Trustees who have um, continually supported us through these four years of um, the Viking Moonstone. And um, I can't believe that uh, this academic year will mark the fifth year goes so quickly. Um, the addition of the art and um, curriculum and the creative writing extracurricular um, club uh, joins the humanities with our, our curriculum overall. And um, it helps our students uh, prepare for college, for their civil uh, responsibilities, and their <coughs> creative thinking. And um, Tracy and I have just been so pleased to be able to um, foster that. Um, with staff and students. Um, you, of course, are our governing body, but you're also staff, and so we're extending an invitation to you all for this uh, milestone of five years to um, please, um, if, you, if you'd like, submit your visual art or creative writing to the Winstone for Volume 5. Um, and again, we thank you so much. Um, I'm a little embarrassed. I do not, we had a little snafu at the end of the year with, with um, <coughs> making these copies, so I have three copies, but I will make sure that, and Dr. Lincoln Hooker, you already have a copy, um, that everyone receives one. So thank you again very much. Thank you. Thank you. And Mayor, I will, I will send you a card. And I'm I have a card for you anyway. Oh, I'm I sorry, I was late in this call, what you said. Thank you, Kim. Uh, thank you very much. Is there any participation by the trustees? Oh, excuse me. We have more public. Sorry. More public. Oh, we're thank run you. by public. <laughs> so the committee has two concerns tonight. Um, and one concern came from another, so I'll start with the first one. Uh, went in to look at some of the past minutes and the past videos. and. The union is now requesting that you either put information on possibly the trustees page as to how to get to the videos or a link to the YouTube to get to the videos because nothing is on our site at all. So we are now taping in hopes to be even more transparent for the community members who cannot come. And now it's just very difficult for people to find those videos. Uh, one person told me they actually went on to the Northampton Public Schools site and found the site and then got to the site. And so we shouldn't have to go in the back door. So we are concerned about that. But on that same line of thinking, as you read tonight, third thing down is your mission statement. And when you come to our front page of this school, the mission statement is nowhere to be found. You have to go into about and then you have to go into the bar on the right and go to mission statement, and then you actually have to download it. It doesn't even pop up. You have to actually click on it again. So we're requesting that you consider, I'm not going to tell you what to do, I'm merely asking that you consider 
putting that mission statement on our front page. Because why are we here? We all teach this in our standards. I have this as a question on my competencies for my students. So why are we here? And it's nowhere to be found. So thank you very much for your time tonight. I appreciate your input. Thank you. Is there any uh, participation by the trustees? No? Rick? Um, no, not no. at this time. Okay, thank you. May I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the June 7th and 10th 22 Board of Trustees meetings? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Fabulous job as usual. Clear, concise, you know, really accurate summary. I mean, it's not easy to do, and it's, it's right. wonderful to have that record. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have information and proposals tonight. Uh, property subcommittee report. Um, <clears throat> yes. Uh, Rick Aquadro, chair of the property subcommittee. Um, we've uh, engaged with Dietz Architects to do <clears throat> a feasible study with the end result being a conceptual drawing of what we hope to move forward with on the replacement of the horticultural building. Um, we have a lot of ideas and thoughts. We have, you know, roll the dice and, and get a whole new complex, but we're not sure if that's a reality. And then uh, in between um, just rebuilding what we lost and maybe a little bigger and then the the least react the potentially the best reality is rebuilding what we lost the same square footage um, but we're looking at the options to see what we can do um, so we've engaged these architects to start working on this we we're supposed to have a meeting this morning with them um, the instructors have provided a wish list of items of what they'd like to see in this new building or this new complex if we can get to that stage um, but there is uh, Tim Smith our facilities director had a family emergency and wasn't available and he's a key part of this whole process so that's been uh, postponed to uh, what next the 26th of the 26th um, there in the Gazette report on the initial meeting there was some misinformation um, the reporter indicated we've engaged them to design us a new complex or new building that's not the case we're not at that stage we're just at a feasibility study and a conceptual study to see how we can move forward um, and then at that point you know most likely go out to RFPs from architects to um, give us a proposal and uh, we go to the next step and uh, hopefully get a certainly we'll be able to rebuild essentially what we had but we're we're trying to go above and beyond that so we're working through that process and ironing out um, what we can and can not do and what we can afford or not afford so that's where we're at today thanks for any questions for her thank you <coughs> thank you everybody it's a relatively short report this evening it may be a little difficult to see i, I apologize for that it seems like it's been forever since we've been here as a team uh, so as I was going through some highlights and updates, it seemed like it was a, a lifetime ago. But back uh, back in June, when, when we were still in session, uh, after the last board meeting that we had, on the 8th, uh, we had our uh, retirement celebration. And we had uh, several retirees that we recognized uh, up at uh, Beaver Brook uh, Golf Course. We had several, not just because of this particular year, but unfortunately because of the pandemic. Uh, we weren't able to celebrate past retirees from the previous few years. So. Uh, on the 8th, we were able to celebrate three years' worth of, of retirements, which was a great evening. And again, I cannot thank Ms. Carver enough. Uh, she was the 
sort of the spearhead behind the scenes making all the plans and the food and all the arrangements. So uh, a wonderful evening and thank you to Ms. Carpenter for all of that. The next day on the 9th we had our, the athletic banquet. Again, yeah, we haven't had that in the last couple of years because of the pandemic. So Mr. LaRoe, the athletic director, did a great job. Uh, one, I believe, big change uh, that really made the evening, I think, more efficient uh, was that we cut back on a more formal meal. There was no formal meal. It was more simply getting in there doing the banquet. Uh, the coaches did a great job with their presentations to the student athletes, uh, and it was a wonderful evening. On uh, the 13th was a uh, DESE CTE update call. Uh, just some various updates from the, from the state that we've been talking about here uh, as a board. The following day, the 14th, was the last day of school, if you can imagine that. It's been over a month now. Uh, and I, I want to thank all the staff that were able to participate and supervise the annual uh, field day event, which again, we haven't had over the last couple of years because of the pandemic. Uh, but it's nice to see the students getting involved. Uh, to think of a field day at the high school level, it seems like an oxymoron, but uh, it's a, a wonderful opportunity to see the kids out there doing different activities. Uh, it gives a chance for the staff to sort of say goodbye to the students, and it's a good way to wrap up the school year. So then, uh, this was the first year that we celebrated Juneteenth, so it was a new holiday. We were closed on Monday the 20th. And then the following day, I flew down to, a, to Atlanta, Georgia, to watch the Skills USA competition. I have a, a slide coming up with a couple pictures. You'll see our students at, at work. I'll explain how well we did. I was honestly hesitant and concerned about how Atlanta could host a Skills USA competition. Uh, I've been two other times, one time with Ms. Corbett, uh, down in Louisville many years ago. I was really impressed uh, the two times I went to Louisville. They do a good job hosting it. The fairgrounds down there is just this gigantic fairgrounds, and they host the competitions. Uh, the hotel is about approximately 20, 25 minutes away. I wasn't quite sure how Atlanta could handle it. I was blown away. Uh, Atlanta is a beautiful city. They have beautiful facilities for this particular competition. The hotel that we stayed in was adjacent to the competition. We were all right there. Uh, right across the street was the Centennial Olympic Park. Uh, where the Olympic bombing occurred back in 96. So a lot of history there, a lot of story. Uh, the aquarium is there, the Coca-Cola factory was there, uh, the Civil Rights Museum is there, the College Football Hall of Fame is right there. So a lot of things uh, to keep the attention of the students and the adults. Uh, so a wonderful week. I'll talk about the competition in a moment. Then uh, we came back, uh, I came back from, from Atlanta. I participated in a meeting with Mr. Kane Lane and Mr. Smith with uh, Donald Escalio working for the DPW. Uh, if, if you're aware or not, there's an issue out on Route 9 uh, with our drainage system. It's sort of, Route 9 sort of caving in, uh, in, in a nutshell. So there's some discussions around the stormwater drainage from Smith and what's happening when it gets out to Route 9. So there's some plans that are on the table, uh, some back and forth. I'm not sure, Ms. Kaylin, you want to talk more on that or I'm kind of leaving the Cliff Notes version right now. Well, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a situation that when the school is designed, 100 years ago that uh, the runoff from the water uh, it, the driveway out there is pitched and it goes down to the pasture in to Route 9 and what has happened over the years is the area between the school and a telephone pole that's right there the water has caused a road around that telephone pole and also into the road so the DPW about two months ago dug up the road and put a steel plate over it, but they inspected it and uh, came in and did a study and brought it to Tim Smith about the way the runoff of our buildings needs to be controlled. So the architects or, excuse me, engineers from the city said to Tim, we will pay to have the drain water that comes off the buildings funneled into the pasture so that it does not run down that driveway into the road and we'll take care of that. Well Donna came over and we had a discussion about it and she disagreed that her department or the DPW or the city was going to pay for it. They said Smith School's going to pay for it. I said look at you know how many years have you been in your job? And I says, this all happened long before you, long before me. It's not Smith School's problem. I said, it's a runoff problem that's been there for a long time. I said, I'm not prepared in our budget to pick up this expense. And your engineers, your employees told Tim Smith that you're going to take care of it. 
Well, needless to say, it was left hand and right hand, and nothing could resolve that day. So it's still up in the air, but Donna's been back over and has been taking pictures, and the engineers are back at it, and they're doing some drawing. So we'll have a resolution on it. It just didn't happen that day. Can I add a little bit to that? So my understanding is that the city is happy to build what's called an outfall to help filter the water so it's not going at such a rapid pace. There's also an issue with the pipe, um, the storm water. The dimensions. Uh, the dimensions are a very large pipe going into a very small pipe. Um, and so basically it's blowing out right now. Correct. And the design would be based on the, the weather patterns or the, the historical weather patterns, the <coughs> engineer's design taking our water, getting it into Route 9, uh, in a way that the Route 9 line can handle our storm water, uh, except for a few cases, about 10 days, I think is the estimate, about 10 days a year where the, the rain is so intense uh, that there'd be an overflow, uh, and that overflow would go out to the pasture. Uh, the concern from Tim is uh, we're already experiencing some erosion in the pasture, and if we're just dumping more, not dumping more water, but if the water's leaching through and getting to the pasture, is that just going to continue the erosion? So that's the concern from Tim. Uh, so then the, the solution to this was, how do we minimize the water getting into the stormwater drain system to begin with? Is there a way to capture that water on campus and get it into the ground before it goes into the stormwater drain uh, to cause this, this issue? So the idea was, is there a way to uh, capture the water coming off the buildings, get it into the ground before it goes into the drain? Uh, that would help. I think everybody agrees that would help. It's who covers the cost for such a project. So uh, that was my takeaway. Mm -hmm. uh, so further discussion has to happen, obviously. Uh, so then uh, many of us, and it's also in the principal's report, unfortunately, Mr. not unfortunately for Mr. Bianca, he's on vacation this week, uh, but he's unfortunately not able to make it tonight. He also mentions it in his report, the Connecting for Success Conference, uh, which is the annual MAVA conference for uh, the teachers and administrators and it's held down at Acid Regional in Marlboro. Uh, we were finally back in person, again, after a couple of years being off. Uh, it's a great opportunity to, re to reconnect with your colleagues across the state. Uh, a lot of valuable direct professional development for the vocational instructors. I believe in the report, I uh, mentioned there were nine teachers and administrators that went. Uh, and not only vocational instructors, we had uh, an academic teacher also participating in, in getting some quality professional development out of the conference. And I'll talk a little bit more about what I got out of it in, we then had uh, another day off, the holiday Independence Day on the 4th, came back and we had uh, the last property subcommittee meeting that Mr. Quadro mentioned. Uh, I have one slide, I'll talk a little bit more in detail, uh, but what Mr. Quadro shared is spot on. Then uh, this past week I went to the MASS conference down uh, in Falmouth, oh, actually in Mashpee, Mashpee High School hosted the, the conference. That was my first time attending as a superintendent. Again, I'll talk about some of my key takeaways from that. And then, uh, Earlier today, you know, we had a, a four-hour planning retreat with, uh, with the Board of Trustees, and I can't think of the trustees enough. I think it was a great opportunity to come together, get to know one another, start talking about a vision and, and a direction moving forward, so that was great. So speaking of, of, of skills, we had three students. Uh, we had a student in criminal justice, a student in plumbing, and a, and a student in automotive, all recent grads. So hard to see, I'm, I'm, I know, I apologize. The picture on the left is our automotive student, Brian McCullough. And uh, he was competing in automotive, that picture there. The automotive competition, I believe, was 12 different stations. And they were each time, about 22 minutes, 28 minutes. And uh, when it, the buzzer goes off, they get up and they move to the next station. Uh, so this was the <coughs> test he was participating in. Uh, the middle picture uh, was our plumbing student, uh, Nick. Uh, so what you see there is that every single plumbing student, they have this station and they're charged with building basically uh, water lines to, to feed a, a toilet, a sink, and a whole drainage system. And they have about two, two and a half days to complete that particular project. And then on the right is uh, Jordan Dunham in the, the crowd of blue. Uh, that's our criminal justice competition. Jordan was a graduating senior from criminal justice. And again, uh, criminal justice was very similar to automotive. They have different stations, they're timed. Uh, so they have an interview, like a crime scene, they have a, a motor vehicle accident where they have to report to the scene and then deal with the drivers. Uh, they had fingerprinting, uh, so on and so forth. So over the course of the week, Friday night was a closing ceremonies, and uh, Jordan Dunham won first place nationally in criminal justice. So it's one of our newer, criminal, uh, criminal justice is our newest program here on campus, 
and now we're the best in the country. Uh, so it's, it's quite amazing. Um, and a young lady winning criminal justice, I think that is also noteworthy. Um, talking earlier today, I don't want to talk about the retreat, but we were talking about different models of, of career technical education. And it was really telling in criminal justice. So as we were talking to other instructors in criminal justice across the country, Many states don't really have a criminal justice program like we have in Massachusetts. And even in Massachusetts, I think what we offer here is head and shoulders over what the other schools offer in Massachusetts. But a lot of Jordan's competitors, they don't have a, a vocational school opportunity. A lot of her competitors were in traditional high schools taking history classes. And within a history class, they had some law enforcement or sort of some criminal justice background. And that was their education in mean, criminal justice. So obviously what we're teaching Jordan and the students here is much f further superior than what uh, a lot of other states were offering. Uh, so anyways, she did a great job. Plumbing as another example, I'm not gonna make fun of any, any states, but if you see some of the, the stations, there were some stations that were pretty rickety as far as the, the plumbing, and, and you wonder if there's any indoor plumbing in some of those states. But, um, <laughs> but when you think about it, it's just a matter of the education value. And you know, we, we are much rig more rigorous here in Massachusetts and it shows when our students go to the national level. You know, they're taking first place, plumbing or second place in the nation. So a small school in Western Mass comes home with a first place and a second place nationally. Uh, it's quite tough. So, great experience. Just to piggyback off Mr. Quadro, uh, the updates that you know, we had at that meeting a couple weeks ago, yes, we have contracted with Deets. Uh, our next property subcommittee is July 26 at 10 a.m. They'll be here in the library. Uh, we are still waiting on, if you drive down back, the building is still physically standing there. We are waiting official approval from the insurance company and then the building department to take that down. Right now there's been an investigation going on. Uh, the, the insurance company trying to look into the cause of the fire with the, the, the lawnmower. So that's sort of delaying the process when it comes to the insurance claim. And then, uh, as Mr. Quadra said, we're still preparing uh, the path forward. Okay, what is that path going to be? And as far as school goes, you know, we have school is going to start in a month or so. Uh, we are preparing to have uh, the two remaining classrooms in the horticultural building being ready to house the two classrooms, like the other related classrooms for day one. And that would be Mr. Nevins' current classroom and then what we call the head house, which is sort of the space adjacent to the, the greenhouse. We believe we can get those two functional for day one. Uh, so that's where we're right right now, but more information after the next property so Just one other pit. I'm just thinking about money and, and grants. Two weeks ago, there was a skills capital grant that, thank you to the board, uh, allowed us to, to apply for. We did apply for that recent round of skills capital grant for horticulture and animal science. That particular grant, if we are awarded that grant, we can apply up to 30% of that grant to construction costs. Uh, so the goal is to apply that money to increase the equipment needed for us to expand into Katana animals for animal science along with purchasing a lot of new equipment in horticulture. And then we can apply 30% of the construction costs that we can use, a combination use it for the renovation costs that we're going to see in animal science as we expand animal science. But also we can then, hate to call it you know, the, the shell game, but if we can use that grant money to apply it to the renovation costs for animal science, <coughs> then the tuition revolving money that I was going to advocate for the board to free up to help for that particular project of renovating animal science, we could use some of that tuition revolving money for the horticulture building repair. Uh, so we're going to use the tuition revolving. I was going to advocate to use tuition revolving money for some type of renovation, whether it was animal science or horticulture. If we receive the grant, that tuition money can be applied to the, this particular rebuild, and the grant money can be applied for animal science. So that's what we're working on behind the scenes. <laughs> So as I mentioned, the two conferences I went to, Connecting for Success, uh, the keynote speaker that week was uh, Dr. Clarice Warnham, and uh, she spoke to us on, on equity. She did a fabulous job. Her big takeaway was uh, focusing on cultural competency. And, what that uh, and, and the key concept there is how do we connect to our students, and can we connect to our students if we don't understand who they are and where they come from? And do we place expectations on students because we want them to fit within our mold and our expectation and how we learn and how we grew up. And when that happens, a lot of times we, we sort of butt heads with the students. Uh, but if we sort of understand the student and where they're coming from and their background, and that background is very diverse, uh, once we make those connections, 
and that's where the education kind of go to the next level. So she gave a great, great presentation. I also had some updates from Desi. Uh, I attended another update on licensure updates, teacher licensures and different pathways. I went to sort of these two conferences, did a lot on, on personal social well-being, uh, not only me as a superintendent, but as an admin team, as teachers. Everybody's been through so much during the pandemic. Everybody's sort of running on empty. And, and how do we focus on that social well-being, not for the students necessarily, but for the staff? Uh, so those are some of my big takeaways. And then uh, at Connecting for Success, Mavo, we had our board of directors meeting. That's, that was the official transition uh, to the incoming officers for this year. And that's where uh, I'm counting down the days of my presidency to be over. Uh, so I took over as president uh, on July 1. So again, the idea is, is great. I'm learning a lot and meeting a lot of people, uh, but just a lot of meetings on top of everything else. So the MASS conference, <clears throat> I went again to the Cape last week, my first time there. The big takeaway there was a keynote. We had a couple of different keynotes, but this one, Dr. Kendi, I'm not sure if anybody has heard about Dr. Kendi. Uh, Kendi. But back in uh, 2020, he was named by Time Magazine as one of the top 100 most influential uh, people in, in the world. Um, he worked at a BU, I believe it was. And uh, it's all about his main focus and all of his research is around racism. And uh, the big takeaway, uh, I've been struggling, I'll be honest, uh, I've been struggling around uh, a lot of our equity uh, initiatives and how do we move forward, okay? And I think a lot of us would identify that we're not racist. Okay. I'm not sure if anybody would really identify themselves as a racist. Uh, but are we an anti-racist? And this was the challenge that he was posing to us. And, and what really the light bulb went off for me was, he was talking back in the, the col not the colonial days, but back before the Civil War and then during the Civil War, Massachusetts was full of abolitionists. Uh, we were very uh, anti-slavery up here in the Northeast. But those same individuals, the, the abolitionists who wanted to end slavery, uh, we would say that they're not racist. But then once the North won the Civil War, those same abolitionists were opposed to voting rights for African Americans. So Dr. Kennedy was talking about how we may not be a racist, but are we practicing, are we instituting racist policies? Are we supporting racist practices? Not knowing. Uh, and the argument that the abolitionists were making were that the African Americans that were recently freed as slaves, uh, they weren't sophisticated enough. They were slaves for so long, they didn't have enough wherewithal to then vote. Um, so it, it was a, a strong point that all of us make decisions, either biased or, I mean, consciously or unconsciously, that we have to sort of review. So uh, I am definitely recharged, I'm ready to go. Uh, I know we have a lot of work to do here. Uh, I think we have a wonderful school. Uh, but that was a major takeaway at the class week. Again, more updates, uh, Desi updates, I think that's just constant. I participated in a joint meeting with Mava and Mars. Uh, Mars, not the planet. Mars is the Massachusetts Association of Regional Schools. Uh, a lot of similarities between their association and MAVA, so we had a joint meeting. Uh, once again, I attended a, a session on how to personally assess ourselves. Um, that was run by a fellow superintendent, um, Volk, Volk superintendent. It was a great, great session, and I'm just kind of looking inwards. And then finally, uh, the READY project. I'm not sure if you've heard about the READY project, R-E-D-I. Uh, that's Race, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, and that's a major initiative coming out of MASS and that we'll all be working on over the next couple years. So, uh, a lot of great work, uh, a lot of highlights, definitely recharge my battery, and I'm uh, ready to go for this coming school year. Donations, I'll click on the link in a, in a moment to, to share with the board the, the current update, thank you to Ms. Carver, where we stand with donations for the horticulture we build. We have two other donations that came in. Uh, so Tractor Supply changed the vendor up in Greenfield, the Greenfield location. They changed the vendor. They have all of this equipment and, and merchandise and inventory that they have to get rid of. Uh, so they reached out to Kyle Bostrom and, and Agnec, and they donated all of that to us for Agnec, which is great. And then Smith College, uh, they had some balance scales and calendars <coughs> that they needed to get rid of. Uh, so they reached out and uh, donated those to the engineering department here on campus. So then the spreadsheet. I know you can't see this, but just to get the visual cue, the sense, by date, this is back on May 26, every row is a donated item that have come in from all over the state. Each line, there might be multiple, so as, as an example, this one line here I'm seeing, chains of, chains of various lengths, these are chainsaw chains, there's 107 of them that were donated. 
So we keep going. And as of today, the monetary donations, monetary donations being checks, cash, gift cards, uh, have totaled $25,061.37. Uh, so again, uh, 25000 won't build a new building, uh, but 25000 will definitely help us with equipment and uh, put a dent into it. And again, I keep saying this, uh, back to the insurance. We have insurance for the building. We also have insurance for the equipment. The more donations we get, and the more we can use grant money for the equipment, as we put the claim in for the lost equipment, when that insurance check comes out for new equipment, we can apply that for the building. So again, back to the shell game idea. Uh, so hopefully we can maximize the money that we have through insurance, through the various grants, uh, to get the building as Mr. Ricardo was referring to. So in the press, this was in the, the Gazette. So back to field day, uh, this was a young man. Uh, we had various community service projects going on uh, around the city, and this was a picture of one of the community service projects that were happening during the field day. So field day is not all fun and games. A lot of the students wanted to give back to the community, and uh, I want to thank the staff that oversaw some of the community service initiatives. So it was great to see that in the paper. So looking ahead, this looking ahead looks like there's a lot. Um, my big assumption, my big ask, is that we don't have an August board meeting. So my looking ahead is assuming that we do not have an August board meeting. Uh, so this will get into the beginning of the school year. So this coming Friday, as the model president, I uh, was contacted by the State House last week asking as a model president if I would want to attend uh, the Skills Capital Grant announcement happening this Friday down at Minuteman. Uh, this is where Governor Baker will announce uh, the latest round of Skills Capital Grant. I also happen to say that we have an application that was on file. That was the application that we had for culinary. So we'll see on Friday if we receive the grant for culinary. Um, and also, we applied for the CTI, CTI program. Uh, that's Governor Baker's initiative, more of the after school, after, uh, after dark programs, our adult ed programs. We also applied for a grant for culinary. That will also be announced at the Friday announcement. So keep your fingers crossed that we'll be coming home Friday with some, some more grant money. That would be culinary. Yes. Yeah. So that grant we applied for a few months ago. Um, the one that we just submitted two weeks ago is for horticulture and animal science. We won't hear about that one until later in the summer. Okay. We already mentioned the property subcommittee on the 26th. We move into August, and uh, down in Devons, I'll be attending the MAVA annual retreat. That's just a chance for MAVA to come together and plan. The upcoming year. On August 9th, we'll have our admin team summer retreat. That will be here on campus, uh, very similar to what the board did today, just kind of mapping out the vision for the upcoming year, uh, planning out the school year. So, that will be happening on August 9th. On the 18th, we were invited to back to Devon's all of the animal science programs. So, as I think I shared with the board, the state has been looking at breaking out veterinary uh, science from the animal science competencies. Uh, there's a, a frameworks team that's been working on that over the last couple of years. We've been involved with that particular team. Uh, they have some major announcements that they want to share with all of the schools. So that's going to happen on the 18th down in Devon. So I'll, I'll make sure I'm going there to hear what the updates are. Then we get into really the, the beginning of school. <clears throat> I want to thank the union and, and the staff. Our school year, the school calendar that we've adopted is sort of a hybrid uh, this year. I, I think it's a win-win for everybody. So it's not the normal sort of days of the week that we've had over the last several, several years. So we'll see how this goes this year. But I think it's Wednesday, if my days of the week is correct. Wednesday the, the I don't know, the 24th, August 24th, whatever day of the week that is, is our new staff orientation. That's when new, our new teachers that we hire will come in for a day of orientation. The 25th is our all staff will report for day one. Were they right? Yes, okay. Wednesday, and then we report on Thursday. Thank you. So Wednesday is new staff. Thursday, all staff come in for the first official work day, our convocation. Uh, they get into the classrooms and the shops and get ready for day one. On Friday the 26th, we'll have our new student orientation. So we say new students, it's typically freshmen, but we also have some new sophomores in upper class, and they'll come in also for that day for a day of orientation. And that's Friday. We come back that following Monday the 29th, and that's our first official uh, day of school this coming school year. It is Monday, August 29th. 
That Friday is September 2nd, per the contract. There's no school on that Friday, but that goes into Labor Day weekend. Monday the 5th is Labor Day, so there's no school automatically. So typically there's a four-day weekend. This year we're lucky there's actually a five-day weekend uh, for the staff because Tuesday the 6th is a uh, primary election. And as a uh, primary testing location, we, we close school just for logistical purposes. So students and staff will have a, a five-day weekend now. And then uh, we return as a board uh, to meet on September 20th. Again, this is assuming no August period. So if we meet in September, we will meet in September. September. <coughs> Assuming there's no meeting in August, uh, the September focus will be, again, opening a school. And how are we doing at that point, uh, two or three weeks into school? And that will send it back. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, questions. Yes? Why was this year the first year that you the first time you went to analysis? Yep. Um, my, honestly, my major reflection was, uh, I'll call it imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome, if you look it up, it's basically feeling like you don't belong, you're not good enough. And uh, the MASS is all superintendents, traditional superintendents, vocational superintendents, and I just, I wasn't quite sure if I could connect with the traditional superintendents. I wasn't quite sure. Um, after going last week, it was amazing, um, honestly. Great discussion, great networking, great connections, great discussion. Uh, it was good. It was Yes. Anyway. I'll definitely go again. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. <clears throat> so there's a principal's report in the packet. Uh, Joe's not here. Uh, I'd like to go to Crystal for business report. Sure. So uh, my office is currently um, in the process of finishing the behind the scenes work and closing out fiscal year 22 and opening fiscal year 23. Um, that entails um, waiting for all of the final invoices to come in and then looking at the budget and then um, all of the cost centers have to go down to zero so it's just a bunch of journal entries um, so that's one this is probably one of our busiest times um, unfortunately the uh, we went to bid for the multifunction um, school bus um, and we have to reject the bid because both the two bids that we received both did not fit the scope of services. So we do have to reject and go back out to it. So when Tim comes back, I'll meet with him. We'll look at the criteria and, and think about the adjustment. Um, I know one of the biggest issues is um, meeting the deadline of receiving the vehicle. And one of the vendors did say that um, ordering a vehicle, the time frame is eight to 12 months before you go. So we had put March. And that was based on the vendor that we had used previously. They had said that's what, that's when they thought the new models would be in. So, unfortunately, we do have to go back out. Um, I'm happy to report all of the tuition was received in time for FY22, with the exception of one district. Um, I did speak with Dr. Lincoln Hooker on this um, this particular district. Um, they're contesting one student, and that doesn't include special ed portion. Um, I did reach out to our legal counsel, who is now directing me to um, Desi. So, unfortunately, my contact's on vacation, so I will um, I did send him an email. So, hopefully, I'll um, talk next week to see how we need to go about it. Um, the grant coordinator um, that we received two applicants, um, so I'm thinking that we might have to repost. Unemployment, we did finally get the third, um, the final invoice for June. We do have two charges. One is from March that um, I did reach out to our contact to contest. Um, and then this one in June we're contesting. So we do have a little bit of a balance for unemployment, but I do feel that we will get those refunded in the next fiscal year. Um, unfortunately, that is my, my report. Do you have any questions that have to answer? Congratulations on collecting all of the tuition money. Well done. There's a lot of parts to that, I know, a lot of you know, iterations. Um, how many students um, for that, that district that is, or this ascending town that is um, contesting the student, how many students do they send overall? So this student does, um, this district does send a lot of students. And so, so have they, um, 
have they, they haven't paid for any of the students. So yet. they have? They paid for all the students, cool. but not the one student they're contesting. The balance is a little off. Um, okay, gotcha. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how um, the secretary did her math because we give spreadsheets with it detailed. Yep. So she just randomly just deducted stuff. Um, so I was dealing with the business administrator who then said, now if you have any questions, you should talk to the, to the town auditor. So it's like they're drop, they're just pushing um, the ball to him. So that's why I feel like guessing needs to be involved. Because we do have a, we did have a signed tuition letter. We do have a letter from um, the superintendent stating that they would pay through the state. So. Um, it was a, no, please tell me if I'm wrong. It was a, a move, a family move situation. Correct, right. correct. And that we were unaware of. Correct. The district stepped in, um, told, wrote the letter to the parents saying that as of this date, we will cover you um, with Smith. If, you, if your child intends on staying, you have to cover the remaining portion. Um, so we did receive that letter, but it wasn't until close to the end of June that they told me that they, they were not paying. And I'm glad to hear they're not withholding the other tuition fees. But it's it's about twenty three thousand dollars. Thank you, Crystal. On your new business, may I have a motion to second to approve the payment on the late invoice June thirtieth, twenty two, two thousand four hundred dollars from the cell tower account to the Zitnu Lanowitz architect for services at the forestry repair and storage building in Leeds. So moved. Question. Sure. Uh, what was this for? It says services. They, yeah, Tim is not here, but I did ask that question, and it was work that was done during a period of time that Tim approved, and they had money in the account for it at that time. <coughs> uh, but uh, the invoice came in late, so that's why I'm asking for it. Okay, so why was there architect involvement? He, he was for they had design read, services? According to my crystal. Sure. So I just spoke with Tim really quick. Um, Tim thought he was going to be here. That's why I didn't get more detailed information, but mm -hmm. yeah, unfortunately, due to his emergency. What he said was um, this work was supposed to be done earlier in the year. Um, they were waiting for a carpentry to finish um, the hold downs and bolts and stabilization, and then Zip had to go back in and re inspect to make sure that it was up to, to what it needed to be. So, yes, the, bill, the invoice was received late, so it should have been received sooner, but again, he was waiting for the, the final walkthrough. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, you have a second. So, second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. May I have a motion to second to approve for discussion of possible action a vote to approve applying for a potential skills capital grant. Andy, anything on that? Just we can do a second. Discussion. Great. Do you yeah, want to move it? And I'll second. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So moved. Second. Now for discussion. So this is a, a new grant that will be coming out. I've mentioned this in the past. Uh, it will be coming out later this summer. <coughs> falls under the traditional skills capital grant. We know that's a reimbursable grant. We know that I have to ask board approval to apply for the grant, which is why we're here this evening. Uh, it hasn't come out yet. It's going to come out later this summer because of the meeting schedule. That's why I'm in front of you this, this evening asking for this. We are intending to apply again for horticulture and potentially animal science. Uh, this is a larger grant than the one that we just submitted two weeks ago. The monetary amount is much larger. And rather than only 30% being applied to, to construction, this new grant we can apply up to 70% of the grant to construction costs. Uh, so this would be a, a potential big win for us uh, in the rebuild of horticulture at the building. Uh, so that's why we want to get your approval. So then we can, uh, once it comes out later this summer, we can write for that grant, submit for the grant, hopefully, hopefully receive that grant to really help us out with the horticulture rebuild. Can I ask a question about Please. the um, process? Um, and curious um, we don't approve every every time someone applies for a grant we don't approve all of those but w why um, the, state. Who, the state requires that be, that's part of the language of the skills capital grant is that you have to have the approval of your because it's a reimbursable board. grant we have to have the available funds up front okay. so the local school committee has to say yes we, we authorize okay. Got it. thank you uh, question uh, 
explain the reimbursable part. So hypothetically, if we receive a grant of $5 million, uh, the state won't give us the $5 million to go out and then purchase our equipment. So we have to have a means of spending that $5 million. As we spend the $5 million, we submit for reimbursement. So we don't have to spend all $5 million up front and then get reimbursed. If we spread the $5 million over six months, you know, we have a bill, we submit the, the invoice, we get reimbursed. But we have to have that, that available money ahead of time. And if we don't submit for reimbursement um, by their deadline, we would have to find the funds where the city would have to. to uh, so they want to make sure you're for real. <laughs> So, may I uh, ask, is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve the following. Let me read it all. The following surplus for scrap from Criminal Justice 10 uh, books, Criminal Law 10 books, 10 Motor Vehicle Law books, 13 Street Law books, textbooks, and 12 Constitution of Massachusetts manuals from Science 1 Broken Water Distillation Unit and from Social Studies American Journey World Culture and Geographic and Psychological Textbooks. We have a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Is there for any further discussion? I have a question. <coughs> Ms. Carver down. Um, I want to make sure I ask enough questions. Just kidding. Um, uh, where do the books go? Um, like, do they go to? Um, I, I know that sometimes they're. Uh, I know books are heavy and it's, it's hard to ship them. But I also know that there are um, schools that are looking for resources. So I was just curious um, where they go. Do you know? That's a good question. Honestly. So I know that some of them have copyrights, which so Jim has to follow those because we were talking about some that he had in storage but these say scrap so mm, they might be going in the trash okay because otherwise surplus he would, he would put them out yeah thank you any further discussion all in favor aye all right uh thank you and say it publicly for the retreat that you put together it was a fabulous opportunity uh deb did a great job at lunch and uh, the whole day was just a special opportunity to uh, look at the future of our school as far as the daily activity. Andy, thank you for the reports that you gave us. You enlightened uh, Rick and myself about a lot of things. And I know we've got a lot of work ahead of us with, uh, with uh, not only the things that are on our platter as far as the fire and uh, the grants, but uh, your staff is to be complimented. Please, uh, Deb, uh, mark that in a minute so that they know that we appreciate the hard work that they're doing behind the scenes, that uh, they do get the credit that they deserve. Thank you. So, next thing, future business. August 16th, 10, 10 at a regular Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, we're not going to have that, so we can take that off. September 20th, regular Board of Trustees meeting, 5 p.m. here in the library. October 18th, regular Board of Trustees meeting, 5 o'clock here in the library. May I have a motion to second to adjourn? Rick? So moved. Second. So second. So All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.